Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be setting up our character. So to begin, what we're going to do is of course create ourselves a brand new node which is going to act as the base of our character. Now, unlike some other games where we might want to have a character controller that we can use the mouse and keyboard with to jump around and interact with the physics system, we aren't going to be using a character body 2D. Instead, we are going to be using just a base node because our characters, they don't need to be moving around with the keyboard. They're not going to be interacting with physics or anything like that. So I'm just going to click on the plus here and we are just going to create a nice basic node 2D. Okay, create that like so. Let's rename this to be character. And with this character node, what we're going to do is we then need to give it, of course, a visual. So I'm going to go to our sprites folder and I'm just going to drag in the dragon, okay, like so. We can then make this dragon sprite a child of character. Let's rename that to be sprite so we can actually, uh, at a glance, see what it actually is. And then what we need to do is we need to set the position of our sprite to be zero on the X and zero on the Y. So it is nice and centered on our character right here. Now, along with a sprite, we also need to give our character a health bar to display what their current health is. So to do this, we are going to right click on character, go add child node, and we are going to be looking for a progress bar. Now, a progress bar is a very handy UI element inside of Godot. It basically allows us to have a, well, something like a health bar, for example. So click and drag on these orange uh, circles to resize it. And I'm going to position it just underneath our player right here. Okay, you can, of course, uh, determine how big you want it to be. Now, with our health bar here, let's first of all rename it to be health bar. At first, um, we might need to change the visuals around a bit because let's just actually go over to the inspector first and change the value right here to be, uh, we'll change the value here to be 50, okay? Just so we can have a look at what it looks like. So you can see right now, um, the value is basically how full this bar is. So we can, of course, change that inside of a script. Um, but we want to change the visuals, okay? We want it to have to be red and we don't want this uh, percentage here. And instead, we want our current health slash our max health, okay? So to do those things, we're gonna first of all disable show percentage to get rid of that right there. We are then going to go down to theme overrides, go down to styles, and then you see we have background and fill. So I'm gonna click on the little empty drop down next to background, go new style box flat, and this, if we then click on it, will open up this little window here. We can then change the BG color to be probably a dark gray like so, all right? And then we can go over to the fill, do the exact same thing, style box flat, let's open that up, change the BG color to then be, let's just say a nice red, okay? Something like that. And there we go. So that is our health bar. And of course we can then change the value so we can click and drag on that to basically see what it looks like. Uh, but we also need our text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on health bar, go add child node, and we are going to look for a label. Okay. And a label of course is where we can have text display. So in the inspector, I'm just going to give it some default text of 25 space slash space 25, as this is generally what it's going to look like. Let's resize this box to basically fit the bounds of our health bar here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to change the horizontal alignment to be center, so it's in the middle, and the vertical alignment to be center as well. So our text is now centered right here. Now, we also probably want to change the size of the text and maybe give it a bit of a backdrop so it doesn't blend in so much with our health bar. So to do this, we can go over to our label settings, click on where it says empty and go new label settings. We can then select that again to open it up. And on font, we can select that and change the size. So let's just increase the size a bit here. Something like that, I reckon. Oops, we'll bring it down a tiny bit. Yep, something like that. We can then position it where we like. There we go. Um, now let's also give our uh, text an outline. So we can open up the outline here. Let's give an outline of, uh, we'll say three pixels. Change that color to be a dark color like so. And there we go. We can even give it a shadow as well if we wish. So we might want to um, up the alpha value on this shadow a tiny bit here and give it a size like that. So there we go. 
Um, and we can then rename this label to be our health text, okay? Just so that we know exactly what these nodes do when it comes to uh, implementing them in our script. So there we go, that is pretty much the structure of our character. We have a node 2D, just a basic node 2D for the base node. As a child of that, we have a sprite for the visual. We have a health bar for the um, basically showing the uh, visual representation of the player's health, and then health text to show the exact numbers. Now, if we press play, you'll see that our character's in the top left corner. And the reason why is because we don't actually have a camera in our game to actually move around and size the way we wish. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus. We're going to create a camera 2D. Now, if we zoom out, you can see it's kind of hard to see on the purple background here, but the camera is pretty big. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the camera zoom and set that to be 1.5 on the X and the Y. Okay, now if you press play, we should see our character in the middle of the screen like so. Okay, so we've got our character, we got all of their nodes set up. Okay, and one final thing is we should then make our character a scene as we will be using it multiple times for both the player and the enemy. So let's click and drag on our character down into the file system and save it as character like so, okay? And now if we ever want to edit our character again, we can just go down to our file system, double click on character, and that will open it up in its own individual tab here where we can modify its uh, nodes. So thanks for watching. And in the next lesson, we are gonna be working on our character's script. So I'll see you all then. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be setting up our character script. Now this is going to be probably the biggest script in our game because it is going to contain a lot of information such as the player's stats, such as their health, um, and also the ability for them to take damage, um, heal, as well as cast combat actions which we'll be implementing later down the road. So first things first, let's go ahead and set up our character's script. So here I am inside of our character scene. I'm gonna select our character. I'm gonna go over to the script property here. Make sure this is on the character's root node. We're gonna create a new script called character. Okay, um, and make sure it does inherit from node 2D, but that doesn't really matter since we're not really going to be um, affecting our inherited class at all. So click create, and here we are inside of our script. So the first thing we need to do is add a little line down here underneath extends and this is going to be called class underscore name and we're going to call this one character now what is this doing well basically what we're doing here is we are giving this script which is technically known as a class its own specific name and this is because we are going to be storing this um, as a variable in some other scripts as well as extending from this script itself as we will be sort of referencing this script or this class um, later on down the road, okay? So we're just gonna do that for now. Now, next up, we need to create our variables. Now, for our variables, we are going to have a variable for is player, so is underscore player of type bool. And this is just gonna be true or false for whether or not this instance of the character is the player okay because we need to know uh, if this is the player then we don't want them to automatically decide a combat action and we are going to export this as well so at export at the start basically if we save this script and select our character you'll see that this property is player appears here in the inspector okay and that's what this little export tag does basically it just exports it to uh, the editor so we can modify its value there now another variable, which is also going to be exported, is going to be our current HP, so underscore uh, cur underscore HP of type int. Let's set that to a default of 25, and the same thing for our max HP, okay? So we got our current and our max HP values right there. Now, something else we also want to do is have a variable to keep track of our combat actions. Um, so I'm going to add this, but we're not going to be filling it in or really looking at it just yet. So I'm going to export a variable, and this is going to be called combat actions of type array. So we're going to get into this a bit later, so we're just going to ignore that for now. We also need a variable to keep track of our opponent. So I'm going to create an opponent variable here of type node. 
And then finally, we need our health bar and our health text. Now, we aren't going to export these. Rather, we are going to use the on ready. And what this does, if we create our health bar variable of type progress bar, what we can do here is go equals get underscore node. And this function right here, we can find our health bar like so. Basically, what this on ready does is it means that at the start of the game, when this uh, node or this scene is initialized, it is going to get the health bar node and assign it to this variable. So instead of going down to the ready function and going health bar equals get node health bar, um, we can do that in the variable declaration right here with the on ready, okay? And we can do the exact same thing for our health text. So at on ready var health underscore text of type label equals get underscore node. And then we can go through this little drop down here to find our health text like so. Okay, and that's all we need to do for that. So those are the variables that we are going to be using for our character script right here. Um, now let's just implement some of the functions that we are going to be using. So one of the most common functions I reckon is actually going to be a function. If we go down to a new line here, we're going to create one called func, and this is going to be called underscore update underscore health bar. Okay, an update health bar. Basically, what this function is going to do is it is just going to update the health bar percentage and the health bar text. Okay, and this is going to be called when we take damage or when we heal, okay? So if we heal or take damage, anytime our health is modified, we want to update the visual health bar. So what we're gonna do here is go health bar, whoops, health underscore bar dot value equals current HP. Now, one thing we do also need to keep track of or make sure is to set um, the health bar uh, max and min values because if we click on our health bar progress bar here you'll see we have a min value of zero but a max value of 100 so what happens if our max hp is only 25 like here well we could of course go in here and change this to be 25 but the problem with that is if we have multiple different characters and they each have different um, max hps then it's going to be a bit convoluted to go through and modify each of their progress bars so it's better if we do it automatically and to do this, we can go to the ready function, which gets called right at the start of the game when the scene uh, gets, in it, or when the node gets initialized. And we can go health underscore bar dot max value equals max HP. So now this max value uh, property is automatically going to be set to our, whatever our max HP is at the start of the game. Okay, so we've got that set up. Now we also need to go ahead and make it um, display our proper health value, our health text. So for this, we're gonna go health underscore text dot text to access the actual text property of our uh, label equals, and we pretty much want it to be our current HP slash max HP. Now to do that, we need to combine some strings together. So I'm going to make a function here called str and in brackets, we can give it multiple different parameters and it basically combines them into one string. So we can go current underscore HP, comma, and then in quotations, we can have a slash like so, comma, and then our max HP value. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna basically create a string that looks like, for example, we might have 10 current HP, then it adds a slash, and then out of 25 max HP. So that's basically what our text is gonna look like then when it combines those two variables and the string. Okay, and that is our update health bar function. Now, along with this, we're also gonna have a couple other functions. So um, first of all, I'm gonna delete process since we won't be needing that. And I'm gonna create a function called take underscore damage. And this is going to have a damage uh, parameter in here. And this gets called whenever our character or whenever this character takes damage and we want to reduce their health. So for this, I'm going to go current underscore HP minus equals damage. So we are subtracting damage from our current HP. We then want to update the health bar. And we then want to check to see if our current HP is less than or equals to zero. And if that's the case, then our character is going to die. So if current HP is less than or equals to zero, then we want to destroy this uh, node. Now, to, the way we can do that is by using the Q3 function. So Q 
underscore free like so. And that basically destroys this node. Now, we're also going to be doing some other stuff where we um, are going to be um, basically sending a message to our turn manager whenever a character dies, just so we can see, you know, determine who the winner is. But we're not going to implement that just yet. So we're just going to keep um, it as destroying the character for now. And then what we can do is also create the heal function. So func heal, and this is going to have a parameter of amount as well. And this is going to be pretty much the opposite of take damage. We're going to go current HP plus equals damage. So we are oh, plus equals amount, I mean. So we're adding the amount to our current HP. And we also then want to update our health bar. So update, oops, update health bar like so. But what happens if we heal above our max HP? Because with the max, that's, you know, as far as we can go. So what we want to do is we want to go if our current HP is greater than our max HP, then we just want to go current HP equals max HP, okay? Just so that we can't go over whatever our maximum threshold is. So that is pretty much all the base functions we need for our character. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at setting up our turn manager as that is going to basically be um, what controls the game, you know, what determines whose turn it is and switching between the players, okay? So I'll see you all then in the next lesson.